I will now introduce Kim McCarthy. Our panel moderator for Women's CBD Entrepreneurs is Kim McCarthy, founder of Pipeline Strategies. Pipeline Strategies guides organizations on how to effectively brand as an employer of choice. In other words, the place you really want to work. In a nutshell, she helps you to attract and keep key employees. This is an extremely important function since as a former employer of thousands, I learned very quickly that the most important assets are the ones that walk out the door every evening. In technology, who gives a crap about a bunch of computers? It's the people that make it actually work. And I think cannabis is a lot like that. Further, Pipeline Media is your media and marketing partner for investor pitch events and partnering with emerging brands to increase visibility and penetrate markets through our sales, PEO, and digital publications. In 2019, Kim entered the cannabis and digital marketing arena by launching Harvest and Plume and the Cannabis Sessions. After receiving accolades for the presentation of information in digital format, AKA the experience, her unique digital formatting became highly sought after by progressive companies needing to share information, such as shareholders communications, business presentations, pitch decks, training, company letters, et cetera. So Kim, if I've missed anything, please feel free to elaborate briefly, briefly on your bio. Otherwise, Kim, please feel free to take it away. Thank you. Hi, Kim, I believe you're on mute. Now? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no worries. That was the best of us. It was just the top secret y'all were looking for. You so. got it. <laughs> <laughs> if Let you can read lips. <laughs> Please repeat. My lip reading is terrible. I just wanted to say thank you very much, um, especially to Dr. Sandra, because she's um, really introducing um, or the, the perfect transition into my talking with Davina and Mandy. Um, our panel is really about women in the CBD space. And ever so briefly, since I was already introduced, I'd like to share the, the spotlight with Mandy Lyle. She is with Potency Number 710. And then we also have, a, with me, I have like the Brady Bunch, only there are like 30 of them on there. Um, and then I have Davina, but I don't know where Davina is on my screen. So hi, Davina. She is with Element Apothic, and the exciting thing, two exciting things. One is uh, she's presenting today to the, the investors, so she's pitching. And also, this is her grand opening. So bravo, congratulations, and welcome to the space officially, Davina. Let's, let's start with you, Davina. Hi, how are you today? Good, good. So tell me more about, um, uh, really, just a brief, why you decided to get into the, the cannabis industry, whether it be hemp or, or marijuana. Yours is, is, is yeah, I mean, I, my experience, <laughs> my experience with cannabis started really early, actually. Um, I have a picture, I think I was about five or six months old, just sitting. And my dad actually, he was Hawaiian, he was also a military um, veteran, and he suffered from severe PTSD. And so I have a picture of me sitting on the couch and I would always love to grab his little <laughs> seedlings he was growing and, and hold them. And, and it was something that meant so much to me because I knew how it helped him from an early age. I, I remember being in school and there was all these programs, anti-drug programs, and you would sit there and they would ask you to raise your hand if you knew anybody that did drugs, including smoking marijuana. And I remember sitting there feeling ashamed, like, oh my gosh, if I, if I don't raise my hand, I'm lying. But if I raise my hand, something's going to happen to my family. And going home and talking to my dad about that, about how it really helped him to be able to survive, that he couldn't walk outside. He really had severe PTSD and, and it really allowed him to live life. And so I grew up always believing in the benefits of cannabis 
Um, I'm also Hawaiian and so part of it's also culturally aunt and uncles and stuff sitting around and smoking, but I always knew they were happy. It wasn't like people who drank and, you know, would end up kind of angry or upset in myself as I went through college and, and studied. I went to school for engineering. It was intense and, and I used it to help me and help me relax. It allowed me to study. And so through the years, I actually went into the tech internet space. But when I did get the opportunity several years ago, I was um, hired to do some uh, work with a company that was producing a book in the cannabis space. And I was so excited to be able to work on that because I really understood the benefits and, and how it helped. I didn't understand all of the reasons why and the education behind it, which I've learned since then, but I knew that it impacted people. And that's continued through now launching Element Apothic and really being able to bring products that can continue that level of really making a difference and helping people. That, that's awesome. I, I, I want to put a pause on that. Um, I want to introduce Mandy and, and how she came into the space. And then we're going to really mesh into the women in the CBD stuff. So Mandy, please. Hey, girls. Hi, boys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I um, I also have a long history with the cannabis plant. Um, I probably visited more prisons growing up than theme parks because my dad was the local drug dealer and uh, he did uh, always have grows in all of our houses. And my mom and dad divorced very early on so she did not approve of that lifestyle. Um, so I was torn between two lifestyles, the Girl Scout leader and the drug dealer. Uh, so. I grew up around the plant and um, I never was mad about the plant because like Davina mentioned, the other drugs that I would see uh, going on, the pharmaceuticals or the drinking, I always thought seemed to bring much more problems around than anybody that was smoking a little. They just seemed a lot more calmer. Um, after that, I ended up going into the skincare industry, which I've been an esthetician for 23 years, 24, as of September, 24 years. Um, I've been an esthetician working alongside a very well-known physician. He was much into herbs and plant medicine. And uh, I, I really got interested probably at the age of 20 uh, into ingredients with plants uh, using a lot of lavender, rosemary, thyme, geranium, cypress, uh, all the essential oils I'm just extremely passionate about. I mop my floor with essential oils. I diffuse essential oils. I think that they have such a mind, body, spirit uh, effect on us. So skincare to me is like a ritual and self-care is extremely important. I think it's important teaching uh, young children about self-care because it builds our confidence. And um, I'm just hoping that with bringing cannabis into my beauty line potency number 710, that I'm going to be able to help clear the stigma a little bit and lead people into trying more plant-based products. And I believe a lot of people will start with topicals um, before that they try the gummy or the edibles or, or smoking. Um, I believe they'll try those topicals and, and see a really good result with them. And it will lead them to try other plant-based um, products as well. Um, and I'm just happy to be here and we have an amazing gift box going on. I'm sure we'll talk about throughout the day, um, but there's three great brands in that box and anybody could benefit from this box. Um, it's three retail size. So I'm sure we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> well, let's, let's keep going with what you're talking about. Um, for those who don't know, Mandy also is um, owner or co-owner of a dispensary and but she doesn't manage it. All of her energy is focused on the CBD product or brand of potency number 710. And I'm interested to know why. Why, why do you say, you know what, I don't want to focus on that. I only want to focus on this. Well, I don't think I, and I'm, and I'm a woman, usually we're pretty patient, but I don't have the patience that my fiance Harry has um, that he's had this entire time he's been in the business for well over 10 years uh, even before it was medical um, and he has to we have two dispensaries here uh, in Needles California uh, which we are from North Hollywood area uh, but once they opened up uh, Needles as a place to be able to cultivate on a large scale um, we decided that it was a great opportunity the lamb was a lot cheaper here um, so we're vertically integrated at one of the businesses um, where he's licensed to do manufacturing, distribution, and retail all under one roof, uh, and it's attached to 100 acres with promises to do lots of other fun things. 
Um, and then we have a second shop um, that's a retail shop that is in Needles as well. So there's four stores in this little small town, um, but it's extremely busy, um, especially since it was deemed essential. Thank God that's the only thing getting us through this pandemic is cannabis. <laughs> but um, it's been extremely busy. It's right off the 95 or right off of a, a freeway. So it's really busy. And we're thankful for that. Um, but he has a lot more patience than I do. And I just find the beauty side is what I know. And incorporating CBD as an ingredient in the beauty products, what I'm watching it do has just been amazing. That seems like it's very, it's a lot more rewarding. I can actually see what CBD and cannabis is doing to people's skin, where he can only hear what people tell him that it's doing to them, that it makes them feel better or it helps them with their pain. But I actually get to watch these transformations, um, which to me has just been mind blowing to watch what that antioxidant CBD and free radical fighter is actually doing to the skin. And just like Dr. Sandra Carrello mentioned, the endocannabinoid system and, and how the CB too, uh, is connected to the skin. So it's just uh, with all the omega and all the, all everything, all the ingredients in there, it was a no brainer to, to stick with the beauty side of things. And, and this less dealing with the city, that city is just not fun to deal with any of that stuff. <laughs> well, Davina, how about you? Because you came from a completely different background. You were, it, she and I share the same blood in this capacity. Um, Davina comes from a human resources background, so more people strategies, and then um, a business consultant. And then why did you decide to, to make those decisions, uh, the transition towards CBD or cannabis? Hemp? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, it really came from as you, as you go through your life and, and your career, you really start to understand your, pur your purpose and your mission. And, and being in human resources, as you know, initially, I really was able to make an impact on the people that I worked with. And I worked in the internet space and, and some, uh, you know, many startups and really was able to help build incredible teams and, and sometimes saw the successes and obviously sometimes saw uh, the failures of some of those companies, but I really was able to make a difference. And and studying things and really looking at things from an analytical perspective and in terms of how people can really help generate the business and the things that you can do and how important those leadership positions are in building the foundation. And so then I trans transitioned into business consulting because I thought instead of just one company, I can help many companies do the same thing and, and actually started transitioning more into operations and strategy but I still was missing my why and what my purpose was. And, and as I started to really understand also the market and cannabis, like I said, I was involved in a, in a book early on and, and thought there really is a need to bring a level of professionalism to this space. I think um, there's a need for women to come into this space. And so I was given the opportunity, my great aunt actually created these incredible line of wellness products to help her suffering from several autoimmune diseases and medical conditions. She was actually growing her own cannabis in her living room, making her own Rick Simpson oil. And those products allowed her to go from being partially bedridden to living. And those, some of the products had CBD and cannabis, some of them didn't. Um, and she came to me to help her build a website because she wanted to bring her products to more people. And as I started using her products, I already live a life of you know, organic and plant-based. And, and so I started using those products and I would actually buy them to friends, parents or give them to friends that were going through things or using them for myself. Um, and the opportunity came to be able to take that business and, and run with it. And so I thought this is amazing because I have the ability to build teams. I, I love what this plant can do for people. It can really make an impact on people's lives. Um, and I also have the business acumen to really try to bring the product. She asked me to bring them from, she goes, can you help me bring my products to the world? So I thought I had the ability to really bring her products to the world. And that served my purpose of why, because I can really help people um, that deserve better. They deserve clean and safe products. They, as Mandy said, this plant impacts so many things and it can really help in the products that you create, whether it's beauty or tinctures. And so it encompasses all of what brought me here. And on top of that, I get to be involved with this plan. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, well, one of the things I actually love and referencing uh, what Mandy referenced earlier is um, we're calling it the three brand box. 
uh, with Good For Potency 710 and Element Apothic. First of all, I hope you all take advantage of it. That is a really good deal. My eye is tearing up. I'm tearing up over this deal. Um, <laughs> but having said, with these great successes, I want to know as women specifically in this CBD corner, um, how impactful and what are the successes that you've seen? And I'm going to flip that around and say same thing on challenges. So go ahead. Oh, Mandy. You're muted, Mandy. I'm here. I just didn't know go. which one of us you were talking to. Um, I don't let I don't let being a woman get in my way get in my way. I, I feel like that I don't step I, I know that I just feel like we're all the same. And I don't I'm not one of those that's like, but I'm a woman and and it's this way, or I don't let that be an excuse. Um, I've just always just came full force and just made things happen, no matter if I was a woman or a man or whatever sex them change, whatever they've changed to nowadays, or if I'm black or white or Chinese, I just have never uh, let that get in my way of challenging me. Uh, I know there's not a lot of women in this space, but I feel like in the CBD space, there is a little bit more women than there is in the cannabis space. Um, so I don't know, I've just never let anything really challenge me uh, right up until this point. I've just been plowing through pretty nicely, actually, Kim. So I haven't had really any challenges. The only challenges I had in the beginning was the advertising challenges that you have and not being able to make the claims that I'd like to be able to say. Um, you know, feeling like we were selling something like crack online and Amazon had me thinking I was selling some drug and I'm like, it's a topical serum, you know, um, they just, you almost felt like the police were going to show up when you launched your website and you were in, and you had a, a little bit of a fear in you, you know, um, exactly. yes. like you, Savannah. I had in the beginning, but I've never let being, I, I don't, I don't, I just think we're all equal. I think everybody's equal. Um, I don't like to divide us into sections and I'm, I just come full force. <laughs> yeah. I completely agree to what Mandy said. I mean, I think it's just being comfortable in your skin, whether you're man, woman, what your race is. And I know there's inequalities, you know, in, in cannabis, I experienced it in, in the internet tech space, but it's just being comfortable with being you and being a leader and being confident in the, the, the brand or the company that you're building, um, I think is, is important in terms of the challenges as a woman. I, I think it's just being, and also being able to be vulnerable. It's something myself that I've been challenged with because I think kind of starting in the internet tech space, I always had to be very polished and I had to be professional and, and now coming into a CPG company and being able to be more vulnerable and, and being comfortable being out there. And people keep telling me, put your stories on Instagram and on Facebook and LinkedIn. And I think, oh my gosh, what are people going to think about me? They won't see me as this professional position, but but it's important to be vulnerable because you want your customers to see you as a person. You want them to know that they can believe and trust in you. And so that's that's been one of my challenges. And then, yeah, what Mandy said, you you talk to people and they're like, what, you're in the CBD space or cannabis space? And even though it's changing, there's still such a stigma um, that exists with it and dealing with banks and having your PayPal account closed and, and all of the challenges that exist where you sometimes think, if people really understood the benefits of, of what we're doing and it really should be an ingredient in products and and it shouldn't be looked at as this you know illegal thing that you're doing and so that i think that that one of the bigger challenges is having to explain myself why did you move out of this industry into cbd what are you doing what are you thinking and then having you know the banks and and all of the other issues that come along with it but it's just being confident and knowing the industry's changing. There's a lot of successes that are continuing to happen. You know, obviously the House of Representatives and the vote that recently happened. So, so there's a lot of changes that are happening in the industry. And, and if we just stick with it and we keep doing better, those challenges are going to start going away. I, I I remember when I I entertained the idea. I didn't enter the industry. I watched the industry for three years on LinkedIn because it was emerging. I I too was. I think fear-based is really just the, the best word. I was fear-based on what my clients would say. I had just moved from the corporate side into the independent space. So, you know, now I'm really representing and I'm representing myself. All of a sudden I'm representing every other person I know. Um, 
and, and you know, people associating and disassociating with me until I finally said, you know, I just need to come out of the canvas closet. Whether you're, you're a consumer or not, it's just coming out of the closet, owning it, being proud. And it took me three years, but I did it. We're so and, glad you came out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, that has allowed me to just take it all off, so to speak, you know, um, just put it in full gear and say, this is what I'm doing. This is who I'm representing and where I'm going. Um, I, I would say that would be the biggest challenge is staying in the cannabis closet and just being afraid or fear-based coming out in whatever capacity, support, knowledge base, or, or having a brand. That, that was my big challenge, but again, it turned into a success. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here and, and that you just came out smoking. <laughs> so I, let's round this out and, and talk about one more thing before we, we um, promote the three brand box. Um, so let's talk about if you could improve one thing, what would it be and why? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Five minutes. Are we there? Okay. Five minutes. There okay. Improve one thing. Well, that's a that's a deep question. Um, your questions always make me think really hard. I just want you to know. You just asked one last few days ago. What is our superpower? And I looked at it and had to revisit that same question the next morning because I was like, "What is you know?" And it, and it's good to think of those things. But Davina, can you answer that question faster because I need to ponder on this. <laughs> I, I mean, the one thing I just think over and over for the industry is that we can all just continue to do better, that, that the consumers, that the patients, that the companies out there, partnerships deserve it, and all of the bad press and all of the inaccurate labeling and, and all of the bad stuff that's coming out hurts us and prevents people from getting into the space, from trying the products, and so we need to all hold ourselves more accountable to do better. And more education uh, and educate yes. and educate yes. along the way. Yeah, yes. just more education. That's what I would I change. So we have more education. Absolutely. Education is so key. I was on the, the phone with my parents. My mom just had uh, spinal surgery and I was suggesting cannabinoids for some pain relief. And it didn't go that way, but, <laughs> but, the, but the education did. And at least that that's a knock on the door. Um, you know, to a 75 year old generation. Yeah. So um, I, I say definitely keep the education going um, without, without arrogance. I, I think that oftentimes we use these big fancy words like endocannabinoid and, you know, cannabinoid receptor. And we may be um, uh, intimate with that knowledge, but there are so many people who aren't and they're easy to close the door on that simply because they don't understand. So I think that for all of us, as, as we use whatever platform, product, um, brand we have, use your voice to, to, to have um, a soft and compassionate educational um, intention. Weed for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> go, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. I was yeah. trying to be nice. You know, that's all the back of the house sucks. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short with the exception of um, Mandy, please tell me what or everyone what product is in your three in the three brand box and then Davina do the same and then um, uh, Jeff is on here somewhere. There he is Jeff Ullman. He We're doing the good the for we have the good for pain salve in there. Um, if you don't need this for yourself, I almost bet you have a wife in the kitchen that's cooking or wrapping presents that needs this rubbed on her today. We all, then we have the Future Face Spa Mask by Potency Number 710 with the CBD in there as well, full spectrum. It's a charcoal mask. If you don't need this yourself, somebody that has done something for you, your secretary or somebody this year needs that. Davina's product is the Calm Tincture that's going in the box. We're awaiting uh, UPS to bring that. I'm chasing that truck every day like a dog. Um, so <laughs> we are waiting for that product to throw into the super cute box wrapped with the marketing tape with all three brands on there. Um, and it's 55, is that what he Brad priced that at? $55 for all three products. It's an 88% savings. So you're getting three retail size products in a box 
ready to gift to whoever you want to toss it at or keep for yourself. It's an amazing, amazing promo and a way to try a product. If you haven't tried a product, just go to the Eventbrite link, click it and buy it. And then you're going to love it. <laughs> I and, and lastly, congratulations, Davina, on your grand opening. Yes. Uh, her products are officially for public consumption. Yes, we're so excited. It's been a, a long road, but we're really excited that people can go on our site and buy our products and and really um, start using them to, for better. Davina, what's your website? Do you want to tell it real quick too? Yeah, I'll, I'll type it also in the chat. It's, thank you, Mandy. It's okay. elementapothic.com and I'll type it in the chat for everyone. And mine's potency710.com and good for is uh, on here somewhere. I'm thinking he's, Jeff, it's probably good. For, does anybody know what good for Dot com. It doesn't matter what our websites are. Just go click on the box. You're going to get all three products that has all of our information in there. <laughs> Thank you all for your time and, and good luck on your pitches.